Hello, so today we are going to discuss physics paper 1, that's May June 2019, variant 11, the paper code is 9702. So let's start. Let's start with question number 1. Question number 1 says that which unit can be expressed in the base units as kg meter square per second square? So we take per day joules joules is basically work done so this is force into distance force is ma and distance is d so we can jot down the units mass is kg acceleration is meter per second square and distance is meters so this becomes part a which is kg meter square per second square so 1 a for question number 2 it says that the luminosity L of a star is given by L equal to 4 pi r square sigma t raised to the power 4 where r is the radius of the star, t is the temperature of the star, sigma is the constant with units watt by meter square by kelvin raised to the power negative 4. So what are the SI units, SI base units of L? So for this we have to basically uh, we have to do that 4 pi is a constant so we have to ignore it so what we are left with is r square sigma t raised to the power 4. So now first find the units of sigma. Sigma is watt over meter square kelvin raised to the power 4. Watt is basically power so it is energy per time we have already found the units. In the, in the we already know in question 1 the units of it so what we can do is for energy we can put kg meter square per second square and for time we can put s so this becomes kg meter square per second t so sigma becomes kg meter square plus second cube and divided by meter square k with the power 4 so this becomes kg by second cube k raised to the power 4. So the units of sigma are kg over second cube k raised to the power 4. So now we know the units of r and t, they are kelvin and meters. So we can put them here. For r square it's m meter square. For sigma it's kg by second cube kelvin raised to the power 4. And t raised to the power 4 is kelvin raised to the power 4. So this becomes kg meter square per second cube. So this is C. For question number 2, the answer is C. Now for question number 3, let's say the particle has velocity v at an angle theta to the horizontal. The component of the particle's velocities are vv upwards in the vertical direction and vx to the right in the horizontal direction as shown. What are the expression for the magnitude of v and for angle theta? The magnitude of v. So Magnitude of V, we know that it is square root of horizontal component square plus vertical component square. So either it's A or B. So now for theta, we should know that tan theta is equal to the horizontal vertical component tan inverse equal tan inverse horizontal component over vertical component over horizontal component. So tan inverse is vertical component over horizontal component. Theta equals tan inverse vertical component over horizontal component. So it's B. That's, that was an easy question. Question number 4 says that a wave produces sound waves of frequency 5 hertz. The waves are detected by a microphone and displayed on an oscilloscope. What is the time based settings on the oscilloscope? So what we have to do over here is that we have to know that frequency is 5 hertz. So we should know that frequency is equal to 1 over time period. So we can find the time period. 1 over 5 is 0.2, which is 0.2 seconds. So we can we know that the whole complete wave is being completed in two blocks. So if the whole complete wave is completed in two blocks then for one block the time is 0.1 second so which equals 100 milliseconds 
So the time we're setting is 100 milliseconds per degree. It's D. For question number five, it says that the speed shown on a, the speed shown on a car's speedometer is proportional to the rate of rotation of the tire. The variation of the diameter of a tire as it wears introduces an error in the speed shown on the speedometer. A car has a new tire of diameter 600 mm. The speedometer is accurately calibrated for this diameter. Just the car rear tires as shown with 6 mm of the material being removed from the outer surface. What is the error in the speed shown on the speedometer after the wear has taken place? So let's see question number 5. For question number 5, we know uh, we have to first identify that if the wheel is 6 mm from one end, then it's also 6 mm from the other end. So this makes up 6 plus 6, which is 12 mm out of the 600 mm tire. So that's 12 over 600 into 100. This makes up 2%. And as the radius has been reduced, and we have to identify that the angular velocity, that's the angular velocity which is to be considered here, that the radius is reduced or you can say the diameter is reduced and the radius also reduced the angular velocity increases so we have so for question number five it's two percent and the angular velocity increases so the speed increases the speedometer increases the speed on the speedometer increases question number six says that car travels along a straight horizontal road. The graph shows the variation of the velocity v of the car with time t for 6 seconds of its journey. The brakes of the car are applied from t is equal to 1 second to t is equal to 4 seconds. How far does the car travel by the brakes are applied? So first we have to identify over here that the area under the velocity time graph is the distance traveled and the gradient of the velocity time graph is acceleration so over here we are asked about the distance so to find the distance while the brakes are applied it's one second till four seconds because the speed is decreasing so we have to just find the area of the trapezium as shown so trapezium half into 22 plus 8 and the sweep makes up 45 meters to so part B. That's what I need to question. Let's go into question number 7. It says that a stone is thrown vertically from the top of a cliff and falls into the sea some time later. Air resistance is negligible. Which graph shows how the vertical component of the velocity of the stone varies with its horizontal component of velocity as it moves through the air? So, you have to know that the air resistance is neglected here, so it won't be a curve, it would be a straight line, first of all, so A and B are not into the options. So the left ones are C or D. So we have to also, we have to know that the vertical velocity, the vertical velocity changes and the horizontal velocity remains same. That's what we read study in projectile motions. So the answer is B. Question number eight. It says that a positive charge of 2.6 into 10 with a negative 8 coulomb is in a uniform electric field of field strength 300,000 volt per meter. How much work done must how much work must be done on the charge in order to move it a distance of 4 mm in the opposite direction to the direction of the field. So we have to find the work done. Work done is, we know that work done is force into displacement and force for an electric field is charge into electric field strength. So we, instead of force we can write charge into electric field strength into displacement or the distance. So force is given which is Q into E, charge is, you can plug in the values, 2.6 into 10 to the negative 8, electric field strength is 300,000, and D is 4 millimeter converted into meters, and you will get the answer A, 3.1 into 10 to the negative 4. Question number 9, that's a new question, such question was not asked before. Each 
diagram illustrates a pair of force of equal magnitude. Which diagram gives an example of pair of force that is described by Newton's, second, Newton's third law of motion? So you have to first know about that what Newton's third law of motion is with its clauses. You have to know that in Newton's third law of motion, the forces act on different objects. They are equal in magnitude. They are opposite in direction, and they are forces of the same type. So over here, the forces act on different objects. Part A, the driving force and the total resistive force. Part C, the support force and the weight. Part D, it's the weight and the lift. You cannot see that R. There are two objects who are acting and the force is equal in magnitude. No. So it's only B, which is the relevant answer. Hello. It's the earth and moon. So uh, the two objects they are equal in magnitude, they are opposite in direction. They are forces of the same type and they act on different objects. So part P is the answer. Question number 10. Question number 10 says that a stone is dropped from a tall building. Air resistance is significant. The variation of distance fallen with time is shown by the dashed line. A second stone with the same dimension but a smaller mass will drop from the same building. Which line represents the motion of the second stone? So this is the part of the first stone. The resistance has increased. Now the stone experiences more air resistance so it will take more time. So C could be a possible answer because P is linear so it can't be a possible answer. So C. Question by 11 says that a helium atom of mass m collides normally with a wall. The atom arrives at a wall with speed v and then rebounds along its path. Assume that the collision is perfectly elastic. What is the change in momentum of the atom during its collision? That's a question being asked again and again and again in the past paper. So, it's so we have to find the moment, uh, the change in momentum of the atom. So it's mv when it's colliding with the wall in one direction and it's negative mv negative or negative mv when it's in the other direction so it's uh, they are up so to become 2 mv so it's d 11 d question number 12 says a cylindrical iceberg of high pH floats in sea water the top of the iceberg is at high pH above the surface of the water the density of ice is pi and the density of seawater is Pw. What is the height pH of the iceberg above the seawater? That's uh, a good question basically. You just have to know that ice is in equilibrium. It's floating, so it's in equilibrium. So the forces acting upward equals the forces acting downwards. So the force of ice, because of the ice, equals ma mass of ice into acceleration and if the force due to water is mass of water into acceleration the acceleration gets cancelled up so we are not important so we are left with the mass so mass is density into volume so density of ice into volume area into height of ice and density of water area into height of water you know that it's h minus h. You can see from here that it's h. The total height is h, so h, the small h, detected. So it's h minus h. So you just have to make h, the smaller h, the subject of the whole equation. So we can see that its h becomes one minus p i over p w. So it's A. 12A. It's the relevant answer. Question number 13 says a couple is applied to a tap action. 
but a typical couple diagram what is the torque of the couple so you have to just know that force distance between the forces is 2d so it's 2fd c this is quite easy question like give away questions question number 14 says that a crane uses a counterweight to stop it from toppling over when lifting a load as shown the counterweight has a mass of 5000 kg the crane is required to lift a load of 12 kN and the horizontal distance from the pivot to the load is 17 meter how far from the pivot should the center of gravity of the counterweight be positioned in order to keep the crane in equilibrium so let's simple moment question clockwise moment equals anti clockwise moment the clockwise moment is 12k into 17 meters equals the anti clockwise moment is 5000 into 9.8 that's mg plus the weight into the distance this is the required distance so just calculate it it will become 4.16 meters question number 15 it says that three parallel forces act on an object as a result of the forces the object is in equilibrium what what must be correct for these forces they all act along the same line they all have the same magnitude they do not all act along the same line they do not have the same magnitude so if i consider that they have the same magnitude that this cancels out this then the third force will not be able to keep the object in equilibrium so b they do not all have the same magnitude seems to be the correct answer the rest are incorrect. Question number 16. An empty glass beaker has a mass of 103 grams when filled with water. It has a total mass of 361 gram. When filled with cooking oil, it has a total mass of 351 grams. The density of water is 1. What is the density of the cooking oil? That's a simple question. We just have to solve it up. The mass of beaker is 103 grams. The mass of beaker plus water is 361 gram. Just subtract the mass of beaker from this, you get the mass of water, 258 grams. The mass of beaker and oil is 351 grams. The mass of oil, subtract the beaker mass, 258 grams. So you don't know the density of oil, you know the density of water, you know the mass of oil, you know the mass of water. So you have to know that density is directly proportional to mass. So density of water divided by the mass of water equals density of oil divided by mass of oil. You have you have three terms, you don't have one term which is density of oil. So just plug in the values, get density of oil 0.961. So the answer is A. 0.961. Question number 17. A rope is attached to a sledge and boy uses the rope to pull the sledge along a horizontal surface with a constant velocity. The tension in the rope is 100 newton and the rope is held at 30 degree to the horizontal. How much rope? does the boy do on the sledge when he pulls it a distance 5 meters along the surface? That's a simple question. You just have to apply W is equal to FD. You just have to identify that the force 100 Newton is this horizontal force which is 100 cos theta which is 30 into 5 which is 5 meters. So it's a simple giveaway question. The answer is C. Question number 18, the kinetic energy of an object of mass m moving at speed v is given by the equation shown. Kinetic energy is half m square. Which equation is not changed in the derivation of this equation? So you have to just know that the derivation of half m square, that you have to know that it starts from the field because you have s, s is a displacement. So we take the equation, linear equation, uh, v square minus u square is equal to 2as, we make s the subject u is 0 s equals v square by 2a so we put we know that s becomes v square over 2a so we put it in f is equals to ma so f is equals to ma F is equals to M A so instead of instead of 
work done is force into displacement so instead of s we have to just put v square over 2a so it becomes m a v square over 2a so a cancels out with a so it becomes half m v square so the only way not used is s equals to vt so answer is b a c and d all were used in this derivation so you have to memorize the derivations of Question number 19 says that a grasshopper of mass 0.1 to gram jumps vertically to its back legs over a time of 0 0.02 seconds to jump, leaving the ground with a velocity of 3 meters per second. What is the average power developed by the legs of the grasshopper? So you just have to know that power is energy supplied by unit time, and energy is, you can find it, you know the velocity, you know the mass, kinetic energy, half mv square, which is 5.4 into 10 per negative 4. So you can simply put it in the power formula, power is energy supplied by unit time, you know the energy, you know the time, 0 0.02 seconds, so it's 5.4 into 10 to negative 4 divided by 0 0.02 seconds, so it becomes 0 0.027 volt, which is C. Question number 20. Question number 20 says that a spring of original length 100 mm is compressed by a force. The graph shows the variation of the compressing force with the length n of the spring. So you have to know that it's the compressing force. This the spring is being compressed. So it was originally 100 millimeter. So it was compressed, compressed and compressed. Okay. So it's like just like this. It's a backward graph. What is the energy stored in the spring when the length is 70 mm? When the length is 70 mm, it has started from 100 and up to a point of 70 mm, you know that this area is the energy stored. So we have to find the energy, we have to find the area under this curve. So it's half into length, which is 30, 100 minus 70, 30 into the force, which is 6 newtons. So this becomes 0 0.09. So question number 21, a 0.8 meter length of steel wire and 1.4 meter length of brass wire are joined together. The combined wires are suspended from a fixed support and a force of 40 newton is applied as shown. The young modulus of steel is 2 into 10 to power 11 pascals. The young modulus of brass is 1 into 10 to power 11 pascals. Each wire has a cross sectional area of 2.4 into 10 to power negative 6. The wire obeys Hooke's law. What is the total extension? Ignore the weights of the wire. So you just have to know that stress is force over area, and uh, you can calculate the stress. Force is given 14 newtons, and area is cross sectional area is already given which is 2.4 into 10 to the power negative 6 so it's 16.6 .6 into 10 to the power 6 which is the stress over here see. so now we have to know that young modulus is stress over strain which is stress over strain is extension over length so for case 1 because of the steel we have to find the extension we can calculate the extension by stress into length original length divided by the young modulus make extension the subject and find the extension due to speed which is 16.6 into 10 to the power 6 into 0.8 divided by 2 into 10 to the power 11 which is 6.64 into 10 to the power negative 5 meters so for due to brass the same thing stress into length original length divided by young modulus which becomes 2.32 into 10 to the power negative 4. Just add both of the extensions together, and the total extensions become 3 into 10 to the power negative 4, which is part B. So, yeah, this question is, is also being asked in some forms previously. So, you can consider it a repeated question. Question number 22 says a transverse wave in a medium has a wave form shown where V 
uh, y equal vertical displacement x equals horizontal displacement the speed of the wave is 20 centimeters per second a particle of the medium oscillates vertically which of, of the vertical displacement y against time t best represents the motion of the particle so we have to just know that the time period is seconds by centimeter so we have to know the time period that is second over centimeter into centimeter so second over centimeter is the speed of the wave which is 1 over 20 we are given with this and we have to multiply it with the time period uh, with the complete wavelength which is 4 centimeters so 1 over 20 which is second over centimeter into 4 which is centimeter so centimeter cuts up with centimeter and second so time period is only left which is 0.2 seconds so we should know that the time period is, must be 0.2 seconds so part a and b part a is 0.2 seconds so it's the correct answer b is 4 seconds it's not the answer c and d are simply not in the, op in the considerations so the option a is suitable question number 23 the graph shows the variation of the displacement of particle with distance with the transverse wave at, the, at an instant in time the wave is moving to the right which position along the wave corresponds to a point where particles in the wave are traveling the fastest upward so for these type of question that we are being asked point where particles are traveling the fastest upwards or fastest downwards or something like that you just have to draw the next instant wave for example this is the current instant we have to draw a wave which is displaced in the time or in the distance axis just like this i'll show you how Just like this. This is the current wave and this is the displaced wave. So, so see here A is the fastest upward, B is upward but less, C, C, C is fastest but downwards and D is also down but slow. So answer is A. A long tube filled with water has a tap filled at its base as shown. A tuning fork is sounded above the tube and the water is allowed to run gradually out of the tube. A louder sound is heard at intervals after as the water runs out of the tube. The change in water level between louder sound is 32 cm. What is the wavelength of the sound in the tube? So that's a basic question. That this question has been asked uh, like several times in the past. Uh, we have to just we have to identify that the change in water level between louder sound is 32 centimeter. That means that the node to node distance is 32 centimeter, which is node to node is lambda by 2, which is 32. So lambda becomes 64. So lambda, which is the wavelength, is 64. Question 25 says that a stationary insect on the surface of water creates circular waves with its legs as shown in diagram 1 the insect begins to travel to the right as shown in diagram 2 which will describe the changes to the wave at, at x caused by the movement of insect frequency and wave speed so first you have to know that from diagram 1 to diagram 2 that this distance between the wave is the wavelength we have to identify that we have to know that now in diagram 2 we can see that the wavelength is decreased because the wavelength is decreased the frequency must increase so the frequency must increase either it's c or b and we all know that the wave speed must remain the same in v is equal to f lambda we know that the wave speed remains the same the frequency and lambda change so it's b in 5 2. question number 26 says that a toy motorboat moving with constant velocity vibrates up and down on the surface of a pond this causes the boat to act as a source of circular water waves of frequency 2 hertz the speed of the wave is 1.5 meter per second a man standing at the edge of the pond observes that the wave from the boat approached him with the frequency of 3 hertz the formula for Doppler effect calculation with sound wave may also be used for water waves what is the possible value of free so 
we have to know that v which is being asked is a source velocity we are given with the source frequency we are given with the observer's velocity and we are given with the observer frequency so we just have to apply that observer frequency equals to source frequency into observer frequency divided by observer frequency minus source frequency and just make source frequency the subject of the formula and put put in the values we will get the source frequency the velocity to be 0.5 and because we have seen that the it is directly towards the man because we know that it's coming towards the man and we can also see it from the, the uh, frequency have increased so the wavelength have been that means that it's going to be so B is the proper touch question number 27 says that two progressive waves of frequency 300 hertz superimposed to produce a stationary wave in which the adjacent nodes are 1.5 mm power but at the speed of the progressive wave so lambda by 2 is given 1.5 meters we can find the lambda which is 3 just put, put in the value for V equals to F lambda frequency is 300 lambda is 3 900 meters per second D is the answer question number 28 the diagram shows the diffraction of water waves in a ripple tank as they pass through a gap between two barriers if diagram is correct in part A we can see that the wavelength before and the wavelength was more after its decrease so it's not the possible answer part B the wavelength before and after are same and it shows the appropriate diffraction so B is the correct answer and C also no corner it's a the gap is large so there must be cornered waves but no cornered waves so it's not the answer in D also wavelength are changing okay so question number 29 let's say a double slit interference experiment is set up as shown a red light source a single slit double slit on screen fringes are formed on the screen a distance between the successive right fringes is found to be 4 mm Two changes are then made to the experimental arrangement. The double slit is replaced by another double slit with half the spacing. The screen is moved to it so that the distance from the double slit. So that's the D, the distance, that's the X, the consecutive right fringe distance, that's A, which is the slit spacing. So we know that lambda is equal to AX over D. Initially, X equals to 4, so lambda is equal to. Uh, lambda x equals to 4 so after that it says that the double slit is replaced by another with half the spacing so a by 2 this is a this a is divided by 2 so x remains the same same divided by 2 d the distance is being doubled the distance this distance is being doubled so it becomes 4 into d lambda by a so 4 into 4 so this becomes Initially it was 4, so it becomes 4 times, so it's 16 mm. The interference pattern for a diffraction grating and a double slit are compared. Using the diffraction grating, the yellow light of the first order is seen at 30 degree to the normal to the grating. The same light produces interference when it on a screen 1 mm from the double slit. The slit separation is 500 times greater than the light spacing of the grating. What is the fringe separation of the screen? So we have to use W equals D lambda by A. So D lambda, it says that it's 0.5 D divided by 500 D, which is it says that the slit separation is 500 times greater. So so it becomes 1 into 10 to the minus 3 is the answer is C. Question number 31 which I come through the pattern of electric field line due to an active point charge. So it's A, it's coming towards the center. This is for a positive charge, and these are for into the peak and out of the peak current. Question number 13 and electric. Light, the electric current is carried by a charged particle in solution, which is not a possible value for the charge in an ion in solution. So, we just have to know that it is an integral multiple, so <coughs> which is not a possible value, a non integral value 4.8 divided by 1.6 as 
3 it's integral b is integral c is integral d is 2.5 it's not so non-integral multiple so d is the answer question number 33 it says a voltmeter connected between two points p and q in an electric circuit shown has a reading of one volt positive to negative one volt reading which are many correct so we have to basically know that voltage is energy supplied by unit charge one volt is given energy per unit charge so the energy is one joules so the charge we have we know that it's one joule so the second thing we must know that it's a charge and the third thing we must know it moves from negative to positive not from positive to negative okay so 33 is the energy needed to move from positive one coulomb of charge from p to q is one joule no the energy needed to move from one positive one coulomb of charge from q to q is one joule that's correct the energy needed to move one electron no the move one electron no so the answer is b which graph best represents the variation with current i of the potential difference v for a filament lamp so we have to just we have to know that the resistance increases for both areas so we have to see in a the resistance is decreasing the resistance is increasing the resistance is increasing as the current increases in part d the resistance is increasing it's increasing here it's decreasing this side it's increasing here it's decreasing here it's and it's increasing here so it's not the answer A is not the answer, it's B. When a battery is connected to a resistor, the battery gradually becomes warm. The this causes the generation of the battery to increase while the electromotive force is unchanged. And internal resistance of the battery increases, how do the terminal connected resistance and output power change this at all? So it's quite simple that internal uh, if the internal resistance increases the drop across internal resistance resistor would be more so across the terminal tension difference would become low so the, if the tension difference terminal tension difference becomes low decreases so the output power decreases so it's A. A cell is connected to a resistor of resistance 3 ohm the current of in the resistor is 1 ohm just make up a uh, simple uh, uh, circuit for that I haven't really made that because I have got no space here uh, make a cell an internal resistance resistor and another resistor and set up the equation for this line it, it will become E equals simple Ohm's law apply simple Ohm's law equals 3 plus Ri ok so it's 1 ampere so. A second identical resistor is added in parallel, the current becomes 1.93. So it's 3 ohm in parallel with the 3 ohm, which becomes the, so the effective resistance becomes 1.5 ohms. So we know that it's 1.93 amperes. So we can multiply both of them to find the voltage, which is 2.895. So the equation for case 2 becomes E equals 2.895 plus 1.93 Ri, which is the internal resistor. So we just have to solve both of these equations and EMF would become 3.11 and interrelation would become 0.113 ohms. So C is the answer. Question 37 says that a battery with negligible internal resistance is connected to three resistors as shown. All three resistors have the same resistance. The current in the battery is 0.3 ohm. What is the current in resistor X? So question like this, we just assume that if they are same, we that the resistance of it is 1 ohm, 1 ohm, 1 ohm. We just solve them up. 1 ohm is in parallel with 2 ohm, 1 plus 1, it becomes 0 0.662 into 1 by 3, 0 0.66 ohm. So the voltage across x or across these two points would become b is equal to ir, i is 0 0.3 and r is 0 0.66, so it becomes 0.198 volts. So the current becomes i equals v over r, v is 0.198 divided by r, which is 1 ohm. Point to 
the diagram shows which method is the diagram shows the potentiometer and a fixed resistor connected across a 12 volt battery of negligible internal resistance the fixed resistor and the potentiometer each have resistance 20 ohms the circuit is designed to provide a variable output voltage for the reading of the output voltage you just have to find the voltage over here it's 20 ohm divided by 20 plus 20 into the total voltage is 12 so this becomes 6 volts so at this point it's 6 volts at this point it's 0 at this point it's 6 volts and at this point it will be 12 volts because this is a fixed resistor so the 6 volt over here would be rejected so the only possible range is 0 to 6 so it's 0 to 6 Question 39 So, the this statement about the alpha particle scattering experiment for the evidence for the existence of the nuclear. A tiny proportion of the alpha particles are reflected through large angles. The depth is correct. The answer is part A. B says the slow, slower alpha particles are deflected through large angles. That's wrong. The kinetic energy of the deflected alpha particles are unchanged. No, never. The number of alpha particles deflected depending on the kinetic energy. <coughs> no. So, it's A. Sorry. <coughs> Sorry. So, question 40 says that some particles are a combination of three quarks. Which combination of quarks would not result in a particle with a charge of either 1.6 or 0? So, we have just have to know that up up quark is positive 2 by 3, down quark is negative 1 by 3, and strength is negative 1 by 3. Just add them up all. For part A, it's up, down, down. So up means positive 2 by 3, negative 1 by 3, negative 1 by 3, which makes up 0. So B is up strange strange. Up is positive 2 by 3, negative 1 by 3, negative 1 by 3. So it makes up 0. So up, up, down. So it's up, up, down. Up, up, 2 by 3, plus 2 by 3, minus 1 by 3. So this makes up 1. So it's we have an option of 1.6 charge. So it's 1. D is up, up and up. So it would become positive 2 by 3, positive 2 by 3, positive 2 by 3. This picks up 2, 2 charges. So only we have, have an option of 1 or 0. So D cannot be the combination. So that's it. In the next video, I will be making up the variant 12 of the same series, May, June 2019. Thank you.